Hi friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Now let's try and take this slow because I've recorded a few times and for some weird reason I get really excited and I'm talking really fast. But anyways, I'm super super happy to have you guys here this week. The month of March is over so it is time for another Knits and Babbles. Knits and Babbles is the podcast or episode based where I go over everything I knit in a month, how I feel about it, what I'm casting on, what I finished, what I want to cast on, or just fiber related things that happen during the month. So let's get right to it. So let's talk about my finished projects first. The first project that I finished is actually this lovely little beanie. This is a beanie that is knit up with some Knit Crate yarn that I got from the Yarn Box subscription and it was paired with a mohair, tin silk mohair. So this is how much I have left. So I did knit up two beanies with one skein of tin silk mohair. It is a very fluffy and soft silk mohair. I find it really adds a nice blue like lightness to the hat. The yarn does have some red and blue flecks in it ever so slightly. It's mainly just like hairs crossing and some lighter whiter hairs, which I think all together makes for a really nice textured hat and works really well with the double ribbing. This is a self-designed pattern. If you guys watched my video from two weeks ago, I went from fiber to a knitted project. At the end of that video, I revealed that I launched my first website, just somewhere where everything can be grouped together. Just all about me and how I started knitting. I recently added a favorite things. This isn't sponsored. This is just things that I really enjoy working with or have bought in the past and really enjoyed. The pattern for it is also listed there for free. I have two patterns, this one and the bow that I made from my hand spun yarn. The pattern for the bow is also listed for free on my website. Potentially in the future, I do plan on maybe selling some things that I've knit up in the past there or maybe knit up some items and put them for sale. I'm really if unsure about that and how that would work. So if you guys haven't, I highly recommend you go check that out and you guys can leave me a message at the bottom. There is a link emails me basically. It is a one size pattern, which is why it is for free. All the measurements and everything is listed on the pattern. I did make it like a form fitting beanie. I actually prefer my hats to be more wrapped around my head than the long toque where it's just like flipping around. I always uh, refer to those as condom hats. Now the second knit item that I finished is actually my Regia sock yarns. I did talk quite a lot about these in past videos, so I'm not going to go too much in depth about it. So I can still link below how the instruction on how the short row heels are made. To be honest, after knitting these socks, I think from now on I will basically just always be knitting short row heels. They are so much easier than I thought. I don't know why I was so intimidated by it. Yes, if you guys haven't tried a short row heel on your sock, I highly recommend you do. It is so much easier than the gusset where you just like knit back and forth and then pick up the stitches on the side and then continue. I knit in the round. I don't knit with double pointed needles. Picking up the stitches on the side on like one cable, everything kind of does end up on top of it itself and then you end up pulling a little bit. You end up with more gaping and more holes, um, but the short row heels work up really, really nicely. For a virgin rustic wool, these socks are actually pretty soft and feel really warm on my feet and I actually really enjoy them. They have so many different varieties and colors. So if you guys haven't tried Regia sock yarns, I highly recommend you go check them out. They don't just have, I don't remember what their other fibers are, but I do know that they have different options. They're also thicker weight. And again, all these options are self striping. So you don't really have to think about it. All you have to do is uh, be careful to know which color is your main color. Like, like for this one, it's the white for the cuff, the heel, the toe, cast on the correct stitches that they suggest and just knit away. The final project that I finished, again, if you guys were with me last week, I don't know why I took up a, a week to knit up the body and like start a sleeve when it, in reality, I just knit two sleeves in one week. Like, I don't know what was taking so long. This I think is the warmest sweater I have ever knit up in my entire life. This yarn is from Kensington Prairie Farm. It is a farm here in Vancouver. They have alpacas and I don't know if they have other animals, but anyways, they have a lot of, they mainly have alpaca yarn and alpaca yarn is very soft, very warm and very drapey. And I'm honestly in love with the way this sweater fit. Is if you guys remember last week, I was playing a pretty hefty game of yarn chicken for the white stripes. The white stripes are knit up with a different yarn than the Kensington uh, Prairie Farm yarns. 
The brown is an alpaca merino blend, and then and the white is Fiber Co. Cumbria, a fingering weight. It is 90% wool and 10% mohair. This yarn is fingering weight, and then the brown was DK weight, so I did hold this double throughout the sweater, and I didn't pair it with the mohair, so that might be why when you look at it, you can kind of tell like it goes, I guess the mohair is kind of bleeding into the white, so at least it's fluffy everywhere, but there is a difference in the knit itself, which I don't really mind. It adds a little texture. Hopefully once this is washed and blocked, we'll see what happens. I honestly have no idea what's gonna happen. I'm pretty sure that the alpaca will drape and we'll see if the wool, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But what I was saying is I was playing a hefty game of yarn chicken. I finished with this much yarn. So this sweater has a full skein held double. This is 300 meters to 328 yards per skein. So basically with one skein, you can do all your stripes in your max size sweater, which I was skeptical to buy another one because I only have the grays left. I don't have any more white. I only bought one white for the stripe because I remembered when I knit up last year's Mexi sweater, I only used one skein for the stripes for that one, but that was a DK weight. Yeah, so I kind of took a gamble with that. I think in my February podcast video, I had only done the German short rows, which is like the small little gap along the, the back of the collar. So basically I knit up an entire sweater in a month, which I think is pretty swell. So that is it for the finished projects. Now we move on to the whips, the things that are in the works. Of course, I have my wraparound tank top. Last video, I said I would finish this in a week. Sometimes I think I am so much faster than I actually am and faster than is humanly possible. I did finish the body and the wraps. This is a summer top that I'm making myself, that I'm designing myself. And basically it just goes like this and you tie it in the back and it has an open back design and then there's gonna be a bow. Right now the collar and the shoulders, the sleeves and the back are all uh, twisting on each other because it is just like knit. The next step would be to go and knit a border all around the body and the armholes to get them to like lay flat because these are supposed to be thicker straps but because they're curling in on each other but yeah, so this is supposed to be like a thicker strap. So this tank top is being knit up with Emily C. Gillies. This is three, 425 yards, 384 meters, the skein. And this tank top right now is a little less than a full skein. I'm actually really in love with this. And if you guys follow me for since last summer, you will have seen I knit up a gray one last year. And I'm currently reworking the pattern and making this green one. I think that this will be perfect for the summer and I'm absolutely in love with the yarn and the way that the green is really showing up in the pattern. So yes, so that is where I am at with this bad boy. It does look really small, but I promise you it's not. It's just that it's like wrapping around itself and hopefully once it is washed and blocked and with the I-cord edging, it will hold its structure a lot better. Now, if now if you guys know me, I like to always have socks on my needles because socks are really fun and simple projects that you can take along with you wherever you go. You can just throw it in your bag and just walk out the door. I have been talking about this yarn. from. It is a yarn that I got from Knit City from Lillian Pine and I just love the colors. I think it is perfect for spring and today it is a really great day. These colors just pop. It is beautiful. I decided to pick a sock from the 52 weeks of socks because I haven't, it's been a while since we did one. So I chose this sock. Speaking of 52 weeks of socks, if you guys did or didn't know, they are releasing a new book, book number two, which will have, I think it has more sizing and it has more beginner friendly socks because these socks are a little bit intense. So it is this sock. Yeah, Snippet 45. And it is a sock with, I, because the yarn is so colorful and the changes happen so drastically and constantly, I wanted a design that wasn't too loud, but still had some fun twists and fun uh, accents to it. So this one, it's a nice design. It's just on the front of the leg and then the back is just the yarn itself. It is with a gusset heel 
I decided to do the gusset heel because that's what the pattern calls for, but I think the second one I'll do a gusset heel as well, but I think from now on, even with the 52 weeks of socks, I might try to do a short row heel. This yarn is really, really lovely to work with. It is soft. I feel like it's gonna be warm, and I like it because I think because it is a super wash, but it does have that frizz that most super wash don't, and I like that. It doesn't have the shiny sheen that super wash yarns typically do have, the slippery aspect to it. And look at the colors. So I can't wait to finish this and get this off my needle. Again, if you guys have seen last week's video where I was knitting up the Marseille sweater, I ran out of yarn and I had to go buy some more drops mohair. And at the store, I had picked up some Sadness Garn Tinlin yarn, and I've been wanting to knit this yarn for the longest time. I think that it is a perfect yarn for summer because it is 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. I love the shine that it has to it. Tinlin is the thinner one, and I believe Lin is the thicker one. It is, they have the exact same colors. It's just that this one is a light fingering and then Lin is a fingering. I decided to go with the tendon because I found it softer on my hands and I like that the coils, the yarn looks a little more braided and less twisted. I picked up a white and a green so that I can hold them together. When I originally bought this yarn, wanted to knit up another t-shirt, the Monica Geller tee that I knit up last summer using the Khaki Gory yarn. Dang it. So the pattern is knit up with a fingering weight. These are light fingering, but last year I knit up this t-shirt with a DK weight and I used six millimeters instead of four. So to make sure that I was knitting it up with the same consistency again on four millimeter needles with a DK weight, I did knit up a swatch just to make sure that it was the same as the khaki gory, and it was. So I cast it on the rib. So this is it. I think that the green and the white pair really well together. It kind of mutes the green a little bit and makes it even more like sage. And I really, really like that. Green is very cool and the white does have a little warmth to it. I think that they pair really, really nicely together. So this is a swatch that I knit up. I like how airy it is and how the colors really play off each other. And I think that uh, this would give a really nice material for a shirt. But then I started thinking, I have these two books of Japanese stitch Bibles, uh, which have lace patterns and just like some fun knit ideas. I feel like I might have shown you guys this in another in another video. Yeah, so basically all these designs and I was thinking what if I knit up the Monica Geller tee, but instead of just having knits and pearls, I choose a lace work as a layover piece. So that's where I'm at with this one. I'm not too sure if having two yarns together, held together, like two different colors held together would work with this type of lace work. I was thinking maybe knitting up some swatches and just figuring out because that will also depend on the stitch count and the decreases for the body and the arms. So I'm gonna need to factor all that in. But yeah, so I'm really on the fence. If I just, if this is noisy enough to just knit a regular t-shirt or if I do a fun, funky stitch design to it. That's where I'm at. If you guys have any suggestions, I'm all ears because I'm torn, but I do love this green. I love the color that comes out of it and I can't wait to wear it. So I feel like I've slowly been migrating to summer knitwears and spring knitwears. I feel like I'm kind of pulling away from the warm. I mean, I'm already wearing summer dresses. I feel like I'm pulling away from the warm winter sweaters right now pretty strongly. It's been getting nicer outside, although it's supposed to rain for the whole month, but that's perfect knit knitting weather. My other stuff, like my shawl that I was knitting up or the Moby sweater, those ones have kind of been on the back burner for now. I didn't really knit that much on them this month. The Moby sweater, one reason why it is taking me a little bit longer is the fact that I need to always carry my iPad with me and just make sure that I am doing the right part of the chart. Yeah, staying true to, to the chart, a little bit annoying. And then my shawl, it's just really, really long and it takes me half an hour to do a row. So that was it for the month of March. I think this month was pretty satisfactory. We did a lot, we got through a lot. And if you guys haven't checked out, I highly recommend you go check out the website that will be linked down below. 
And again, nothing on there is sponsored. It's just my opinions and how I feel. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was so much fun and can't wait to see what next month brings up. So I'll see you guys along next month, next week. Ah, have a lovely weekend. Bye.